Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Edimo's Vlogs. Today I'm taking you on a wild adventure that Cyrus and I experienced in Lamu. What started as a trip to enjoy the vibrant Lamu Kashua festival quickly turned into a suspense-filled survival story. Trust me, you don't want to miss on this one. Watch till the end. So there we were, cruising along the Garsen Lamu road with nothing but good vibes. The plan was simple, drive to Lamu, enjoy the festival and stay for one night and return to Mombasa. But little did you know, Mother Nature had a different plan for us. As we approached Witu town from Okoe, the weather took a turn for the worse. Every rains poured down and just a few kilometers from Witu, we found out that the road ahead had flooded and completely blocked. There was water everywhere. So this is the place where they are boarding the boat. So no. You remember that, that the truck we saw, the one that they carried a boat? I think that they were bringing it here. Imagine if four four hundred per a day. How much is that? No per person. So this is a flooded place. Panda boats or Ambiwa Kupatia Jew. In case of anything, we are hope for safe. In a quaker Jew. Now, here is where things get tricky. Witu is not your average Kenyan village. It's been a hot spot for Al Shabaab terror attacks, and we found ourselves in the heart of it. Just driving along that stretch was just something else. The tension was crazy. Cyrus and I were aware of the risks, but our car couldn't swim, so we were stuck. And when you are stuck, you make the best of it, or at least you try to. So we went back to Witu town. Finding accommodation there was like being in an episode of survival reality show. We didn't know when the next attack would occur and staying there felt like waiting for a storm to hit. We first decided to find food and at the cafe we asked for the accommodation of where we could find a place to sleep. The guy at the cafe was quite resourceful. He gave us a contact of a guy who has two guest rooms. On getting there, one room was booked and the other one was available, so we had to share it with my friend.
Now, four people were Thursday rescued by General Service Unit GSU personnel when suspected Al-Shabaab militants staged a shootout at a roadblock in Witu Forest. Two people have been killed and houses torched in Tar Village between Pandanguo and Witu in Lamu County. Sources say that the assailants who had military regalia were targeting weapons from the KPR officers but were encountered with an expected force leading to their retreat. The attack comes barely a week after suspected Al-Shabaab militants attacked a police vehicle between Harley, Lapset Camp and Garissa. Two people have been killed and several houses torched following an attack in Juhudi, Marafa and Salama villages that's in Lamu County. Residents fled their homes opting to spend the night in schools and in the market in Kibaoni with others spending the night in the forest. So yesterday we went to check uh, the place where uh, the, the the water is flooding, the, the, the place where they put the barrier, and uh, the situation is actually getting worse. Instead of the water going down, it's actually uh, increasing, and the road is also getting damaged. So uh, I think maybe the situation is going to be okay after about two weeks or so. So for now, we'll have to go back to Mombasa till when things get back to normal and the road has been fixed and see the water is is, is, is is finished. Yeah, so people who are like, uh, like passengers, people are booked like a buses, they are getting to that point, they take a boat and then they take a bus on the other side of the river. It's a, about 15 kilometer stretch where it's flooded and the boat is taking about uh, 30 minutes ride so uh, it's not really safe so I feel like a flying is the best option and that's what we're taking So for those people with private cars like us, we still have to wait because the road is totally submerged by water and uh, some parts have been badly damaged. So uh, we have to go back to Lamu Island and we're booking a flight back to Mombasa. We'll come pick the car when everything is okay. We've been stranded here at Utu. It's been today's day five, and this place is not quite very safe because uh, sometimes there have been attacks, like uh, terrorist attacks. So we're driving back to uh, Lam, where we're gonna be staying at the island uh, till our flight on Friday. Uh, so we'll be flying back to to Mombasa and then uh, we leave a car in Lamu and come pick it when it's safe to drive back. We've been staying at this place for the last uh, five days. So today we're moving to Lamu Island. I think it's much safer there. So uh, there was only one guest house here uh, at Witu and uh, we didn't like it, so when we went to find food, we asked at a restaurant where we ate if there is any other place that uh, is nice and clean. Uh, the guy at the restaurant uh, recommended this place. The reason we chose it is because it was very clean, uh, it has parking, so and it was very affordable. We've been paying 600 per, per night. Uh, they have two, two rooms. Uh, they are fully ensued. That's a 
it's like a studio apartment so there's like a kitchen area and a bathroom and toilet and then the bed and a set couch so we've been staying here and then we've been eating out at the same restaurant this place is very small it's like a small market so there's no much like stuff uh, like Airbnbs or like hotels so of the two options we had this was the best and it's been okay apart from maybe some noise from some toxic neighbors <laughs> yeah so everything else was nice the house was really nice and we enjoyed staying here so the reason we're moving to to Lamu is because uh, we feel bored because there's nothing uh, interesting to do here like we only just indoors like sometimes we go for a walk in the evening and then walking around the town is not more than 10 minutes because it's quite small and you can't just leave the places because just immediately after the market is the, the bush where the those boys in court are so we feel like uh, Lamu will be okay for the next like three days when our flight will be so like because Lamu we can walk around do activities like maybe go to Stone Town walk around Shela go to a museum or something like that so yeah I think uh, that's how the situation is here uh, we hope where the drive back to Lamu gonna be fine because the stretch between Witu and Mukoe and especially a place called Witu uh, they've been like I've been reading online like the place is not really safe because uh, sometimes there are attacks time to time so we hope it's gonna be safe for us uh, driving back to Mukoe so we'll be leaving the car to Mukoe the place we left it when we're going to Lamu for the cultural festival. Yeah. We decided to wait thinking the water would go down, the one turned into day two, and then day three. By day four, not only did the water recede, but it actually increased. Talk about frustration. Five long days of waiting and worrying, we made the call. Staying in Witu was no longer an option. The combination of floodwaters and the looming security threat made it a risk we weren't willing to take. <laughs> Simba! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
we finally got into Mokoe from Witu was about like 40 kilometers. It was a scary drive. <laughs> yeah, so there are not many cars, but we saw about four KDF trucks. But we are here safely. So we're now going to Lamu Island. So at this Mokowe car park, if you park under the shed, that's the uh, iron sheet shed, uh, it's 200. But if you park the rest of the places, it's uh, 100 per day for 24 hours. So we've taken the 201. I don't know how long we're gonna be here, like, uh, but we hope it won't be long. But it's 200 per day, so if it's 10 days parking there will be 2,000 <laughs> It's a lot of money but we have no option I can actually see the governor's car here it's the governor's car. So it's been one of a hectic adventure we've had so far But it's life yeah. Thank you. 